Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for your kind introduction. And um, thank you uh, for inviting me to have this uh, this talk here. Um, I first was at the, uh, this uh, meeting in, uh, in May in, uh, in France. I was really impressed about the, the quality of all the, the work that's been doing. And I hope to add a little bit of that myself as well. Um, a little bit about uh, Vitens. Um, well, we are indeed the largest uh, drinking water supplier of the Netherlands. Um, we supply about one third of the, uh, of the Netherlands. And our next uh, competitor, while well, we are not in a really competitive market, is about 10%, so we're really uh, the largest uh, uh, utility there. Um, we operate uh, about 100 uh, groundwater treatment plants, and um, well, we've been, been optimizing our, our networks and operations. And at the moment, I didn't mention the figure here, we're, we are about, at about 4% non-revenue water, so that's a really low number. And that's a, um, a bit of a, a limitation when you want to introduce smart water networks in, in the company. Uh, well, and a, the average consumer price is 128 euro per cubic meter of water, and well, there's been a, a tax cut in the Netherlands, so it's, it's a, a euro now. Um, well, what is our vision when we when we look around uh, when we look at, at smart water networks or intelligent water supplies? We like to dub it uh, internally. Um, we would actually like to know the, the the quality, the quantity of water in every part of our uh, in all our assets. So in the wells, but also at the, uh, at the consumer's house. Uh, we don't use chlorine in our, in our network, so the quality is a very essential thing, and uh, we don't actually know the quality when it leaves our treatment plants. So we have some physical parameters that we measure, some pH, conductivity, uh, turbidity maybe, but we don't measure the, the microbiological uh, uh, safety of the, of the water. Um, so what we would like to do is, is set up a system where we, can, where we can monitor the water or estimate the water quality throughout the entire infrastructure. Um, well, it, it's been very troublesome to get this started within VTENS. And when we did, um, when we did a, a sort of a sweep a, a couple of months ago where we are, um, we are already um, starting with, with, with some, of the thing, uh, some things that are really necessary for a small water network. So we set up our uh, laboratory process. So we have, an, um, we have a very well-established process to get the samples uh, from the field into the laboratory. It's fully automated, so the, the, the sample takers don't know exactly what, they, what kind of samples they have to take. And our plants are already remote controlled, so they can be operated from, uh, from the operator's houses. And we centralized and automated our water distribution uh, in a couple of regions. Um, we did start some work on uh, automatic meter reading, but just for our larger customers. And um, then the other thing that we do is we collect immense amounts of data. And I think that's probably very recognizable for utilities uh, in the room as well. And we store this in, in huge databases, and it's, it's there. So it's sort of a data graveyard, as we like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and uh, what he said, we, so we don't really limit or integrate our, um, our database systems, and there's definitely not a lot of intelligence um, when we look at the... Uh, we look at the data management. Um, and then there's, uh, there's this. We uh, do a lot of research, and we um, also uh, uh, like to, um, uh, to say to our, our the people in our company that they come up with initiatives themselves. And that sometimes backfires a little bit. So we have 1,500 people working in the, in the company. They're widespread. And everybody does their little bit of research without telling anyone else. Um, and we're trying to, to make bridges. Um, but well, the bridges don't really connect, so there's no overall view of what kind of, um, what kind of outcome there should be. Or oh, we build bridges where we don't really need bridges. So we, we do research that we, well, that's already been done or it's not really necessary for the company. And this is, is another thing that we, uh, this may be recognizable to you, I also heard it in the last uh, slide. Whenever you come up in, into our innovation board, to our uh, board of directors, with an idea of implementing uh, smart water and networks, um, it requires a lot of upfront investments. So um, if, you, if you look at putting censoring within a network, you're talking about tens of millions of euros uh, upfront investment. And it's very difficult to actually uh, explain that this is going to make money at the, in the end. So this is something that we at some point uh, needed to, to really address. Um, the, um, the approach that we took is that the, at some point we had um, uh, our innovation board was uh, the driver in this. Um, we sat together and felt, well, we, we just have to start and see where we're, where we're going to end up and then build the business case after we've actually um, developed the framework of what we want to do. 
Um, so well, this is basically comes to um, to piloting, and um, well, we we had uh, Accenture help us a little bit with, with getting the, uh, the the focus on, on what we should do the next couple of uh, years. And there's basically three stages uh, within a, a good piloting process. So you have to start with the technical framework, um, which is where, where we as Fitans are, are mostly uh, at the moment. At some point, uh, you have to translate these technical frameworks into, into your organizational uh, model. And eventually, you can use this model to develop um, a new business models. And uh, if you look into our company, we try to do everything at once. So there's guys working on making new business models so uh, thinking about smart, smart uh, metering and getting the data back to the customers, having them save uh, money, but also helping them to decide on what kind of equipment they should buy to save even more money or save even more energy. So really make sort of a feedback loop. But we don't really have the technological focus down yet, so we don't really know how to do that. So um, what we decided is we're going to really start with the technology and then slowly build on on getting these uh, technology uh, into our uh, operational processes. Um, well, what, what is the, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're, we're going to develop the, the so-called Fitans public playground. And this is going to be um, an, uh, an identified part of our distribution network. It will supply about 150,000 uh, people. And we're going to prepare everything there um, to implement smart water um, solutions. So we're going to build sensor hotspots uh, from the wells up into the people's houses. And we're going to uh, design our ICT infrastructure to cope with all the incoming data. Uh, we're not going to fill everything in yet, so we're not going to uh, ourselves put sensors in or put solutions in. But we're going to invite uh, well, the world or the market to uh, help us get these, uh, get these solutions uh, in. Um, well, at the moment we got sort of the green light to start this, and uh, we are in the, the process of designing this, this playground. And we've identified the area within Fetans where we uh, want to do this. And I think that we will be tendering uh, for companies to uh, provide us with, uh, with solutions in this, uh, in this field. <coughs> um, then I would like to take you uh, through uh, uh, two cases. Uh, one is in uh, intelligent uh, water treatment, and one will be in the sensoring in the distribution network. That we started up a, a, a short while ago. I'd like to present you some of the, the sometimes rather technical uh, results. Um, we, we started up a, a project called uh, SLIM, or Self-Learning Integrated Model-Based Management, together with a number of parties here, and I should indicate also Yorkshire Water plays an important role in this, uh, in this project. Uh, with us. So what is the um, what is the idea? Uh, like I already said in the beginning, um, our water quality is quite well uh, managed within Vitas. We are rather well aware of, of how the water quantity is distributed in our distribution network and in our treatment plants, but we have no real-time idea of our uh, water quality. And the result of this is that we design our plants uh, very conservatively to cope with a wide variety of input changes and, um, well, there's a lot of um, uh, well, safety in, 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 the, in, the, in the design itself. Um, we, we don't really know um, the effect of when we change quantities on the, of the water on the, on the quality of the, at the customers' houses. So that's a, a big question still. And also, because we don't uh, measure things online or don't know the quality online, we have a very expensive uh, monitoring program set up with our laboratory. We spend, I think, close to 10 million euros a year on, on analytical analysis in our, in our laboratory. So that was where we, um, where we started, and we figured, can we in the, in the treatment plant already come to some sort of uh, other way of doing this? So what we, um, what we set up to do um, and we, a couple of years ago is, um, can we de develop soft sensors for water quality uh, in the plant? So get all the data from the plant, all the RTPM data from the database, and link this to water quality um, that, we, that, we, that we've measured and see if we can also get this data translated into advice for, for the operators, for example. And um, eventually, we'd like to come up with, with uh, how should we design the water treatment plan of, of 2020. That is not really based on the design rules of the 70s, but on the design rules of the 21st century. Um, how do we do this? Um, 
what we do is we, we, we take all the information that we currently get from the, from the plant, so there's the, some online censoring that we do in the, in the, in the plant. Uh, we take all the, the real-time uh, process monitoring data into the into systems, and we get the lab data that we measure, um, we acquire this and put this into models as well. And we use a combination of statistical data-driven models uh, with models that describe really what are the physical, chemical, processes uh, going on in the in the plant, so per unit operation. And eventually this has to be translated to, into a dashboard and uh, gives advice to, to an operator. Um, we, we took one of our uh, treatment plants as, a, as an example. This is the scheme of the, one of our more complicated plants, so we have plate aeration, uh, rapid sand filtration, uh, we remove carbon from the, from the water before we soften it with a pellet softener. We have a second filtration step to get the carryover from the a softener removed, and then we, um, we remove uh, human acids with the ion exchange, uh, with an ion exchange process. Um, this we connect with two different types of uh, data solutions. So one is a, a data-driven modeling uh, with perceptive engineering. They've developed a tool called Architect MV that can, can do this. And the Stimula models is a, is a collection of unit operation physical chemical models that was developed by the, by the TU Delft. Um, maybe one more slide back. Um, uh, and so we, this, is a, this is quite a complicated thing to do, we found out. And you can't just put models into the system where you get limited data from, because we don't measure a whole lot of quality parameters in the plant. So what we decided to do is, is um, uh, build big analysis machines and basically make an assessment of the complete plant and, uh, make it and connect this to the data, data model. So basically you're going to feed the models with real-time uh, data um, and use this to further optimize the, the plant. Well, this is um, a picture of the, um, the data collection boxes that we made. This is one set. We built three of them. And they measure all the, 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 the important parameters in the, in the water in the, in the treatment plant. So what does this bring us? And this is uh, one, of the, one of the first results that we get. Um, this is maybe a little complicated slide. Um, what you see in, um, in, 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 in yellow is the, the conductivity uh, that we measure after the softener, so after the calcium has been removed from the water. We measure the conductivity with one of these uh, slim boxes, as we call them. And the blue uh, line gives an, an estimation of what the conductivity should be, solely based on the input water to the plant. So there's basically five unit operations between the, uh, the measured uh, volumetric flow and the, the calculated uh, conductivity. So this was the first soft sense that we could do uh, with the data-driven modeling for, the, uh, for this plant. And at the moment we're full swing with getting the assessment done and the, the slim box are really looking to work really well. So next year we'll be able to make a full soft sensor of the plant and tell you exactly what will be the, the water quality coming out of the plant in real time. Um, the second case that we, uh, that we have is we, we've set up an early warning uh, uh, system for drinking water contamination uh, in the distribution network. We do this uh, together with uh, Optiqua and uh, there's a, a same project going on uh, with us uh, at the PUB and there's a, uh, the National Institute for Public Health is involved as well. So what is our challenge? There's two different kinds of disturbances that we can get in our distribution network. Either it's uh, deliberate, so we get uh, someone putting a substance into our network that, we, that makes people ill. And we have, um, I guess this is a, um, a printout of the emails that I get uh, regularly on water quality deviations. So uh, that's, uh, that's the result of our uh, monitoring program within our, uh, within our network. But it's always, uh, always delayed. So if you measure microbial uh, contamination, the water has already been drunk by the public. Um, so what we uh, decide to do is we, we, have, we are implementing the event lab system from Optiqua <coughs> to determine the uh, water quality deviation in the network. It's a, a generic center that measures uh, the, the refractive index changes in the water quality and is able to really, on a very low uh, PPM level, <coughs> determine the influence of opine of, uh, of, of, of molecules in the, in the water. And we are um, basically building together with them algorithms to see if, this, if a disturbance in the water quality is, is due to, a, uh, to an unintended influence or if it's just background uh, uh, changes. 
Uh, we are aiming to develop this into a, an, a dense network. So not right now we are uh, we've isolated a small part of the network where we put uh, these machines into. Or we really want to take these machines to almost, uh, well, not really street level, but a couple of streets together. We'll be uh, probably monitoring with these kind of uh, these kind of tools. Um, well, this is a slide that shows you the sensitivity of the system. Um, in the bars, there's a um, uh, that there's concentrations of substances in the water that are uh, detrimental to health, and this is a logarithmic scale. And when you measure the sample in the in the red, you're already too late because you're already at a concentration in the water that is uh, bad for health. <coughs> you can see that the um, the event lab system is able to measure all the substances at a relatively uh, low concentration where there's no uh, health risks uh, yet. So these tests we did in our laboratory, and the, the picture on the bottom right shows you the uh, the equipment. Um, so what are we doing now after we validated the, um, the, the, the machines in our, uh, in, our system, in our laboratory? We're now implementing them within our distribution network, starting at the treatment plant and working all the way up uh, to, for example, a hospital. So we put it uh, really at our customers, in our customers' basements. And this information will give us uh, the exact density that we'll need to get this, uh, to get this network uh, going and uh, working. Um, uh, that was basically my two my cases. I'm glad to welcome a question from the audience. Well, thank you very much indeed. We've got time for two questions, I think. Yes. In, in the diagram you have shown, in which period you are now? Um, which one do you mean? Uh, you know, three months, six months. Um, let me see. We are uh, between one and two. Okay. So we've already installed the first couple of machines and we're building the algorithms. And we're, we're testing them. Some of them have already been running for a year at other locations. So in the in both phases, really. yeah. Okay. You mentioned that with four percent NRW, it's hard to make the case for a smart water networks. Yes. Um, well, we all understand that smart water networks are more than you know, leakage detection or uh, NRW reduction. Yeah. Is there anyone working on a business case or trying to make the case for it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, see, well, if you go to business case within our company. We, in our strategic values, we have all these things about sustainability and uh, we would be environment and getting close to our customers. But when it comes to really comparing business cases, the financial part is the most important part. And well, you, you obviously can, can have other financial gains other than uh, uh, reducing uh, non-revenue water and maintenance, or especially in, in delayed investments. Uh, that's where we see the, the biggest gains. But just these other things are much more important, I think. But with smart water networks, we can uh, influence the behavior of our customers and reduce their water use by, I think, by 10%. If you make them aware of, your, of their water use, before we did some experiments with that, they start to use 10% less water. And that's where, where I personally see where the, the real uh, benefits, uh, benefits are. And then what I already told, told you a little bit, you have to take business models into account that uh, account for the loss in income uh, with the uh, yeah, with the water loss because we have 10% less turnover. But so you have to do other things to get to get money. So and I think well, if you get these systems uh, really developed, that might be a way to, to co-develop them with, with other parties. But also by, by hooking up with, with uh, suppliers of, uh, uh, of household equipment uh, and, and use us as sort of a re resale uh, entity and, and do that with, with social media and applications and, and those kind of things. So that's what we're looking into. I'll take one more. Yes. Do you have a good way of valuing data within your business case submission? Is there any mechanism that you've developed to standardize the way people can incorporate the value of having that information when they present a case for innovation? Uh, yeah, we are definitely working on that. So in our investment uh, process, we've uh, we've done we, we sort of have a risk risk based method. So every solution gets a number of risk reduction points. And the, the business cases are uh, are ordered in that way. Within our innovation uh, team, we have to do it a little bit differently. Because if you envision the, the innovation uh, uh, tunnel, so you start with an idea and you come up with implementation at this end, um, deciding whether or not you do something is a lot different here from here. So here it's much more gut feeling, and on this side you have to well, you need you need your business cases. And there's a, we, we set up. Um, a three different kind of, of, of decision-making tools within this uh, within this tunnel. Yeah. Okay. So